Hello and welcome. This is the Women's Network and I'm Elke. I'm your host. I can promise you a wonderful show today. It's going to be very informative and very, very interesting. With this being Black History Month, in fact, we're almost at the end of Black History Month, mm -hmm. and uh, the purpose of the show is to actually bring or make people aware of black culture, I thought this is a great time to uh, bring it up again and uh, talk about it and, like I said, make people aware of it. And let's find out, being a woman's network, what the woman's role is in uh, throughout history, in black history and uh, throughout history for that matter. And with that in mind, I have invited four wonderful, wonderful guests who will talk about women and black history and will enlighten us as to what it was like, where we are now, and where we want to go. So without much further ado, let me introduce you to my guest who will hopefully, and I'm sure they will, enlighten us about a lot of things. So let me start with Sue Thompson to my right. Hi, Sue. So Hi. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Elsa. Sue is an author and a publisher. And uh, Sue, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Sue Thompson. I was born on a farm in Arkansas. I ran away when I was 15 years old with $3 in my pocket and the clothes on my back. I've written a book called One Day They Won't Laugh No More, detailing what happened to me from the time I left with $3 up until age 19. Also, I'm the author of Anatomy of the Sexes, a book about man-woman relationships nowadays, what we want in our relationships, what we do not want, what we will accept, and what we will not accept. So now I let somebody else right. talk. Well, we have a lot, to, <laughs> a lot to look forward to. Great, Sue. And to my left, I have Shadidi Jitahari. Mm -hmm. Shadidi Jitahari is a member of the F African American Cultural Center. She's also an assistant director of the Mary McLeod Bethune <laughs> Institute and a member of the organization US. That's quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so nice to meet Thank you. you. I, as, sh as our um, host has said, I'm Shadidi Jitahari, and I think I would just speak on the US organization, being that um, all of my other titles come within the US organization. The US organization is a so social and cultural change organization that was created in 1960s, in the 60s by Dr. Maulana Karinga. And um, the us is a pronoun that stands for us, uh, black people, as opposed to our oppressor. And it sets a clear line of demarcation between us and them. Thank you. Ooh, that's a lot to look forward to as well. <laughs> OK, well, my next guest is Jimbuko Tembo. Mm -hmm. She is also a member of the African American Cultural Society and chair of the Sinut Society. With that, let me say hello, right. Chimbuko. It's nice to be here, Elka. Thank you for inviting me to participate on the panel. My name is Chimbuko Tembo, and I'm chair of the Sinut Society, which is an Egyptian word that means sisterhood. I'm also a member of the African American Cultural Center and the organization US. Well, thank you very much. And last but not least, I have Shiri Gail Monroe. She is a member of the Association of Black Women Entrepreneurs. She is an entrepreneur. She has her own business. And let me welcome you. Yeah, thank you, Elsa, for inviting me. My name is Shari Gail Monroe, and I specialize in desktop publishing and typing services. I'm a member of the Association of Black Women Entrepreneurs. Uh, Dolores Ratcliffe is the president, and it's been in existence since uh, 1984. Uh, there are mem men and women on, uh, members in the organization as well. Um, they offer so much for all the entrepreneurs. Um, the type of people that are members of the association are um, startup businesses, um, small businesses, medium and large businesses. And with that, it just really helps me to stay focused with my business as well. 
Sounds great. Sounds great. But I can tell you already, I don't think we have enough time. <laughs> we only have 30 minutes. So. Okay, now that we have introduced ourselves, why don't we start out with uh, the subject, the topic, black history. And uh, it's Black History Month. Yes, yeah. I know uh, someone came up with the idea of uh, uh, making it a Black History Week at first, I believe it mm -hmm. was, and then That's it turned right. into a Black History That's Month. Right. So, it was uh, Carter G. Woodson is known as the father of Black History Month, and in 1926, uh, Carter G. Woodson uh, established and celebrated the first Black History Week. It was known as Black History Week at that time. And during the 60s, uh, with the Civil Rights Movement and the Black Power Movement, this idea was expanded and Black History Week became, became then Black History Month, and we still, you know, celebrate it today. Yeah. And we, as, um, we celebrate, when we celebrate and when we say Black History Month, it's not merely a time to celebrate, but it's also a time to learn some lessons. And we um, look to black history to um, learn some lessons and see how we can apply them to our lives today. Um, uh, as Dr. Karinga says in uh, in Introduction to Black Studies, that we study uh, history for four basic reasons, to learn its lessons, to absorb the spirit, to emulate the models of achievement, and um, to honor our moral obligation to remember, because it is our obligation to always remember um, our history, where we came from, and those that came before us. We yeah. also, I'm, I'm gonna let the dialogue go on, but mm -hmm. we we also um, um, categorize um, three main modal periods that um, we look to when we want to see the lessons of our history. And the first period is our classical African classical African civilization. Mm -hmm. The second period is the Holocaust of African enslavement. And the third period is the reaffirmation of the 60s. And hopefully we'll have a chance to discuss those yeah. three periods later and some of the lessons of those three periods. Right. That sounds, that sounds very, very interesting. And I, I like how you brought that up, Shadidi, because our history is so vast. Mm -hmm. So how do we approach you know, African American History Month? There's mm -hmm. so much that we could talk about. There's so many events, there's so many people that it's helpful to be able to put them in some kind of defining periods. You know, what defines us as African American people? And I think those three periods, as you have pointed out, right. um, really define who we are as a people. Mm -hmm. And um, in addition to the other things that I'm involved in, I'm also a Saba, which is a moral teacher in the tradition of ancient Egypt. And so you had mentioned classical African civilization mm -hmm. being one of those defining moments in our history. And if we look at that in terms of what it means to be an African person, what are the lessons we can get from that, we see that as African people, we are the fathers and mothers of human civilization. Mm -hmm. It is in Africa that the basic disciplines of human knowledge were advanced, math, science, geometry, mm -hmm. that not only were the people able to build great pyramids and you know magnificent yes, temples, right. not only the, those structures, but also in terms of their writing. Again, they wrote, they wrote the first social justice text called the Book of Kununup, the Book of Kununup. They wrote the first religious text, what are called pyramid texts. Our people, African people, wrote the first um, social justice text, also the first ethical text, which is the Book of Declarations of Virtues. Mm -hmm. So we have a long you know, history of writing, of our moral instruction. I think of all the things that came out of Egypt, a lot of times people point to the pyramids, but really it's our ethical contribution. The idea that we'll be judged after we die, the immortality mm -hmm. of the soul, the idea of human dignity, that all of us are in the image of God. Mm -hmm. These are ideas that came, came from ancient Egypt. So I think it, that was a very important period for us. And mm -hmm. even in terms of uh, the role of women, as you had mentioned, mm -hmm. the first mother of medicine is Peseshet. The father of medicine is Imhotep. So a lot of times we use other references, mm -hmm. not knowing that we were the first doctors. Mm -hmm. Um, also in terms of the role of women, I think Egypt offers a very unique model when we look at the women in Egypt, that yeah. they had a moral and a social status that's unsurpassed, really. Mm -hmm. And even women today, we're still struggling for some of the things that women in ancient Egypt have. For example, in terms of their moral status, mm -hmm. um, God in ancient Egypt theology 
is both male and female. He has male, she or he has male and female principles. Mm -hmm. Also in terms of creation, men and women were created at the same time. So there was no rib theory. Well, first there was man and then from his rib came mm -hmm. a woman. That, mm -hmm. that doesn't exist in ancient Egypt. Also in terms of women's social status or legal status, women could divorce, which, you know, women just recently have won that right in Western right. civilization. That's right. That's right. You could That's own right. property, you could inherit property, you could transfer property, you could be a witness in court. So I think Egypt, in terms of the lessons that it offered, really offers us a model of creativity and moral and social achievement. How much of that is being taught in our schools today? I think our young folk need to know this because right. The adage, if you don't know where you came from, you're not going to know where you're going to go. That's what they say. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And well, so, I, mm -hmm. I, do you, do there you is know a movement. of any? Yes, definitely. There's a movement going on within, especially at the university and college level. It's called right. the Classical African Studies Movement. That's going on where more and more people are beginning to read and understand their classical African heritage and that's, what we've contributed. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. So how, how far do we go back? I mean, you were talking about thousands of years. Oh, definitely, of definitely. Years. When we're when we talking about the classical African period, right. we're talking about 3900 BCE, mm -hmm. so before right. the Common Era. Well, mm -hmm. that's so great to hear because, mm -hmm. you know, usually we go just back a few hundred mm -hmm. years yes. and talk right. about, yes. you know, a certain period of time and, you know, you're stuck there. Right. And then we go into nowadays and we go back to like 300 years ago and that's stuck. But right. this is really interesting to it hear. It is. Very fascinating. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad, <laughs> I'm happy mm -hmm. to hear about mm -hmm. the women's role at right. that time. that's right. And uh, <laughs> the part we've played. Exactly. So we were really on the scene. Very much so. Pretty dom uh, predominantly Very at that so. time. Exactly. We have pharaohs from Egypt. One of the uh, most known pharaohs is Queen Hatshepsut, mm -hmm. who was a pharaoh that built great monuments that did um, classical writings that we have today. We have autobiographies from women of this period mm -hmm. that talk about what it meant to be a woman during this time and um, just their moral life, what it meant in terms of what they gave to their community and to their families. What, what, what did it mean to you? I mean, can you? Well, certainly. Uh, what they did was they saw themselves as, um, they judged themselves in terms of not so much as what other people did for them, mm -hmm. but what they did for other people. That's right. And so they had um, definite um, texts that they wrote that said, I was a sister to so-and-so, I was a kind mother, I was a, a loving daughter. Mm -hmm. So they judged themselves in relationship to their family members and what they did for their family members. So it was like a moral... Um, Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> right. <laughs> have the it was a moral standard. It was a moral standard yeah. of how... And the concept was not so much that um, I loved this person or I loved the other person, but the people that loved me based on what I had done. Right. Mm -hmm. well, In I today's society, finish. how would you compare a person today with, with the uh, women that you described uh, in the previous period? Well, I mean, do you have a similar <laughs> modern-day woman that you can allude to? Well, I think there are, you know, very, there are many women, I think, that are acting in terms of, you know, I'm sure we all know, we all have our grandmothers or our mothers who taught us, you know, to do right, to love other people, who taught us to be unselfish, mm -hmm. to give of ourselves. Um, and, we I think we and we also have women throughout our history mm -hmm. that we look at that we know they have acted within the concept or within the concept of struggle for the community mm -hmm. and for the family. Right. Harriet Tubman for one, yes. Sojourner mm -hmm. Truth is another one, Mary McLeod Bethune who you know started the first college bookman Daytona School for Girls mm -hmm. and also you know started the first African American hospital, was an advocate of, of, of um, education, was advisor to many four presidents, and you know, she did many things. I would say that she is a model of these women. What about Marva Collins it. in that school where she's teaching these kids that they say could not learn anything? I would think that she is really a fabulous lady. You've heard of her. Oh, I'm certainly. Marvel. I think certainly. that Marva Collins is an excellent educator, and I think that she is committed to the community, and I think that that's a model. That's yes, right. for you today's know. youth, yes. for, for right important. now, right. see, is what I'm saying. Someone who's working, not yes. just for self, but working within the community, that's yes. the concept, yes. is that I am, I can't do good unless I do good within the community. Right. Right. Doing good all, often on my own is, is nothing. That's I have true. to do it within the right. community. That's so true. whatever we do, it has to benefit the community. It has to be a collective vocation mm -hmm. of development, not just for myself. Right. That's true. I'm a teacher by profession, mm. and why did I become a teacher? Because I wanted to right. help 
the community. I wanted to help mm -hmm. young children. I want mm -hmm. to help my people. I mean, I have to do it within my community, and if I don't, what does it mean? That's true. So that is the legacy of, of um, what some of what um, Chimbuka was saying. I guess saying. also you want to share, in this case, you want to share what you have with other, mm -hmm. with your mm -hmm. peers. Or because as an author, that's what I try to do. I go within my imagination and I create characters and I make them kind and loving mm -hmm. and giving mm -hmm. because there's so much meanness in the world nowadays. Mm -hmm. We writers really can do some good mm -hmm. if we just mm -hmm. write about kindness mm -hmm. rather than hate, That's fine. rather than violence. Mm -hmm. And I, as one writer, will always do that kind of mm -hmm. writing. That's a good right. commitment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think another place where we can find models of the type mm -hmm. of women that we're speaking about is also in the second period or the second modal period that we're looking at in terms of oh, African definitely. American history. And that's the Holocaust of African enslavement. And um, in that period, of course, we have women like Sojourner Truth. We have Harriet Tubman. I mean, I, I really appreciate Harriet Tubman and what she did in terms of seeing freedom not as an individual concept because she could have gone north and said I'm free mm -hmm. you know I'm that's gone true. that's mm -hmm. it that's but she true. saw it as a collective concept mm -hmm. recognizing that until all of us are free none of us are free that's right and that's so you know risking her life we don't know how many times I think it's recorded 19, 19. but mm -hmm. that's 19 recorded times mm -hmm. you know to free to help free other African enslaved Africans so I mean, I think throughout our history, but also in the period of the Holocaust of African enslavement, mm -hmm. there are models that we can use to emulate and to build on in terms of our lives today so that we also understand that whatever we may personally have in terms of achievement, really, we have to have a collective concept of achievement and have to work with African American men and women so that all of us can reach you know, the level of achievement that we should have. Teach. One of my great heroes was Martin Luther King, Jr. Okay. He uh, made a statement, and uh, I'm going to paraphrase it. He that starts a race behind will forever remain behind unless he can run faster. Mm. He was talking about us black folk. Mm. We started the race behind, and we have to run awfully fast to catch up. Mm. Some of us has caught up, too. Please believe me. Don't you think so, Dan? Yes, definitely. I agree, but I disagree. I don't think we started behind because Chimbuku just went over and talked about our classical African civilization, yes. that we were the fathers and mothers. So we didn't start behind, but somewhere in there, there became a dips. I mean, our right. history was interrupted. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that comes in the Holocaust of African enslavement. And we, we say African because we realize that there are other Holocausts, right. that there was a Native American, the Jewish Holocaust and that there are other holocausts and we say that it's a holocaust because it was an act that was so morally monstrous that it was not only against the people themselves but it was against humanity yes, right. and why was it because we you said we started behind it was the destruction of human life it was the destruction of culture it was the destruction of what possibilities and the things that we could have offered so we didn't start behind we started in the beginning but there was an interruption and, yeah. that's and then in what the I want to add to that we were behind and we have to run fast that's it that's we what have I to work hard, fast. <laughs> <Struggle> hard. <laughs> yes that's right that's right that's right but I think I think uh, we are running pretty fast. I think we are catching up, or you, you are catching up to the... Well, I think that the struggle, the struggle is long continues. And difficult. <laughs> it's a well, long and difficult yes. struggle, yeah. and you know, the struggle continues. As Shadidi said, we have to continue to struggle on, in all areas of our life. We are mm -hmm. still a people in struggle. Right. We are still a people in struggle, and I think something that, another period, here we go to the next okay, period, so was the we're, reaffirmation we're, of the 60s. Right. You know, the 60s was a highlight in our history. It was a time when um, we... Um, um, had the civil rights movement, right. we had the black powers mo right. movement going on in the 60s, we had the flourishing of, um, of um, black organizations, NAACP, SNCC, CORE, the US organization and other organizations and it was also a time of um, revolt across the country. So. Um, you said something that made me want to talk about the 60s. I don't know what it was. <laughs> Martin Luther King. <laughs> Martin Luther King. <laughs> Martin Luther King. King. But that. there was something else. And I, I forgot my point. But anyway, <laughs> well, I did start the <laughs> lesson on the 60s. <laughs> we could always talk about multi. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot my main point. But um, 
Oh, you said we're still <laughs> on the move. So I think something of what happened in the in the '60s, some of the gains that we made made us think that the struggle was over. And this was my point: that the struggle still continues. Yes. We are still struggling against oppression. We're still struggling against racism, classism, and sexism. So the struggle continues, and it's a long and difficult struggle. And right. that that was my point, you know. And you know, um, with some of the gains that were made with the civil rights movement and the Black Power movement, you know, we had Black Studies come into play. You raised the question, Sue, about you know, is this being taught to our our children, mm -hmm. you know, black studies came into play during the 60s, That's right. you know, um, and it's still, you know, developing, but there were gains made, but, and then there was the um, segregation, you know, um, you know, integration uh, gains that I guess were made. Uh, then people started to think, well, you know, it's all over with, everything is you know, we're all equal, everything right. is over with, but it's not, we're no. still struggling. We're struggling against the same things we were struggling against, right. you know, to, to, bring again, to bring into being a good and just society right. where we can all live and flourish. That's right. I yeah. want to quote again, you know, I'm a quoter. <laughs> okay. You know, James Brown say, I don't want nobody to give me nothing, open up the door, I get it myself. Mm -hmm. We just want the door open, we'll get it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And the masses, the door is closed for the masses yes, of people. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We four ladies here tonight are fortunate people. We're yeah. not the average mass person out there sleeping no. in a cardboard box right now. Probably have no money for the next meal. They out there right now. I see my brothers pushing uh, carts down the street. My black brothers are standing out. Uh, Sister, you got a quarter for some food today. It makes me feel bad. Right. I but give it to them, but what good can a quarter do? What good can a quarter do? Tough it off. And that's why we have when to they're going to be hungry to the next day. That's why we have to again. continue to struggle in a society, supposedly the richest society in the world, and they have people, and we have so many people that live in poverty. That's it. And you have, so and that's why you, all of us have to continue. To that's struggle. right. And when you look at it, it's not just black people on the that's street. Right. There are people of all colors. That's there are white true. people that's on the true. street. That's right. You know, there are people of all colors and classes that are on the street. we have women. Definitely. Yes. And it's children. It's, really, it's children really, out there also. Really. That's real. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Sad. That's right. So, uh, so there's more work for all of us to do yeah. within That's our community. Right. I think we and all we all have to most definitely. And I think still. going back to the um, reaffirmation of the 60s that you were talking about, Shadidi, in, again, in Introduction to Black Studies, which is a text that we use in terms of getting the information in terms of our history and culture written by the chairman of our organization, us, Dr. Karenga, he talks about the different women again in that period that serve as models for us. We have Fannie Lou Hamer, a sharecropper, sixth grade education, who was able to challenge the Democratic Party, who helped mm -hmm. along with SNCC to form the Mississippi Freedom Democratic That's Party. Right. So uh, whether you're the masses or you're college educated, everybody can struggle and everybody should struggle to That's change true. the society That's that we're true. living mm -hmm. in. Um, we just have. Uh, Many people, we have Johnny Tillman Blackston, a mm -hmm. sister who worked right here in Los Angeles to work for welfare, welfare rights. rights, who recently passed. But I don't know if you were familiar with her, but she did this enormous amount of work in terms of getting women what they deserve because mm. we've all built this society and the yes. social wealth yes. of this society right. belongs to all of us, not that's just true. to what is it, 1% of mm -hmm. the people that's owning 90% right. of the wealth. That's true. That's true. But that's I think right. that our history in terms of the 60s is full of examples. We all know about Rosa Parks. And yeah. prior to Rosa Parks, there was a sister named Ida B. Wells mm -hmm. who in the late 1800s did the same thing. She refused to get off the train. And this was before segregation was made legal, but it was more or less understood that you don't sit where the white folks are, you sit mm -hmm. someplace else. But she said, no, I'm sitting up here. So they came and they told her, listen, uh, Miss, we didn't call her Miss, listen, you know, you're getting out of here. <laughs> she said, I'm not. And in fact, um, they had to end up forcing her off. She got a bite off the man's hand before <laughs> she was put off, but they had to force her off the train. Mm -hmm. And she's just, she won her court battle, though, at the lower courts, but then it was overturned at a higher court. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that throughout our examples, throughout our history, there's examples of women that struggled for a better society and a just world for all of us. Teach. Mm -hmm. You know, a problem we have, we might as well mention politics, because politics plays a great, great role in what we get and what we don't get. We have a lot of our young folk that have felony records, and once they have a felony record, they cannot vote. Mm. So I think uh, we need to really and truly give some attention to trying to resolve that issue of the young blacks with felons so they will be able to vote once they have 
paid for their crimes. Because you'd be surprised <coughs> how many of them cannot vote. And if you can't vote, politicians sometimes say you, you're, you're just non-existent. Mm -hmm. That's so, one of the problems. Yes. Unfortunately, I just I just got a signal. I think we're almost done with our oh. show. Oh, oh we, gosh. We, <laughs> we haven't heard from Gail, who is uh, <laughs> an entrepreneur of uh, our now uh, generation. Or uh, uh, talk talk a little bit about the organization you belong to again. I mean, it's it's women have come of age. Women have built organization. Mm -hmm. Women are really going out there and building their own businesses, and. Uh, uh, how did it come about? We have about a second for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. is the founder of the organization, and it was um, founded in 1984. And basically, she felt the need for having uh, a type of platform where women and men can come that are entrepreneurs or that want to become an entrepreneur and just network and build their businesses and work together and, and a level playing field, basically, I guess, and working together. Yeah. And, well, what I think is so fantastic that that women are now uh, getting together and uh, they are building these organizations. They give us the strength, and uh, uh, we want to empower each other, and uh, we want to go on. And I get another signal for one minute, and that's with Sue. Sue, <laughs> Sue Dobbs on my right is, as I said, the author and publisher of some great books, and uh, one is called An Anatomy of the Sexes. I'm sorry you uh, weren't able to talk too much <laughs> about it, but uh, anybody want to know more about Sue's books, please call the number at the end of the screen, or, or in any case, call the number at the end of the screen and we can give you more information about the Sinu Society, which we didn't even touch upon, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and much, much more. So what I'm saying right now, we will have to get together again. Please. Oh, okay. Okay. Thanks for having me. And it. make this a second show. Okay. Thank so you. because this has just gone much too fast. Yes, and uh, sure I want to thank all of you so very much. It was Thanks very, for inviting us. very interesting, very exciting. Time Thanks flew by, it absolutely. It did. Again, thank you so much. Thanks. And thank to uh, our guests. Thank you for joining us and I hope you had a uh, great time listening to all that was said here today because I thought it was of, of great interest and I thought you, uh, I hope you thought the same. And until we see you again for another show, bye-bye. <laughs>